Hello. Can you all hear me with my little mic on? I always wonder, if I say, can you hear me at the back, how would, you, how would I ever know if you can't? One of those questions. Um, hello. Yes, I'm Sarah Hindman. I've been a graphic designer now for, look at the technology, I've been a graphic designer now for nearly 20 years. But what I've spent the last um, few years doing is looking at different ways to answer this question. Why do fonts matter? And I prefer not to lecture. There's plenty of places that people will do that. I also, I very seldom give my own unsubstantiated opinion. Instead, I kind of like to do a few experiments, do a little bit of research, but more than anything, I like to ask your opinion. And this is why I'm going to invite you to spend the next 10 minutes joining me in a little portable version of my, my typography lab. So, why do fonts matter? Ty typography is what our voices look like. And rather than lecturing about this, what I'm going to do is invite you all to play a game of typography karaoke. So it's a very, very simple game. Literally, I'm just going to ask you to say what you see. And before we get started, I'm just going to, in the, in the age-old fashion, do a very, very quick sound check. So if you can just all answer, are you ready to play? Yes! Wow. Yes! <laughs> and now you've got to top that. Yes! <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> You're going to come here and help me in a minute. <laughs> so, right, I thought I'd actually make this one a little bit more complicated, being as this is a room full of graphic designers. So what I, and also there's football on. So I, um, what I want to do is split us into two teams, effectively. So the, the dotted line is the halfway line. And I would now like you to imagine that you are both opposing, supporting teams. And you're both going to, um, to play karaoke against each other. So what I would like you to do is literally, as you did before, say what you see, but look at your side of the screen. So if you're ready to go, three, two, one. I'm glad that worked. <laughs> I was having nightmares last, night, last night about all of you just sitting there going, <laughs> and I'd be standing there having to do it all on my own. <laughs> so I think we can successfully say that that demonstrated that. Why do fonts matter? Also because typography, typefaces, they create trust. Which warning sign would you take most seriously? <laughs> Hands up if you would vote A. Hands up if you would vote B. Oh, I can see about, no, a half hand. Hands up C. Ah, so that was unanimously A. And in the surveys that I do, that, that bears out. Um, Helvetica is the typeface that you would believe most in that situation. But how about this? Which one is the real playtime? Hands up if you think it's A. Hands up if you think it's B. No bees at all, wow. And again, that, that pretty much bears out in surveys. Um, and if any of you know the, the study, the Errol Morris study in the New York Times, where he, um, pro he pro proclaimed that Baskerville is the most believable font, this was my little kind of poke at uh, proving that sometimes it's actually not about the typeface, it's about the context. So choosing the typeface to, cre to create, to generate trust is all about speaking with the right tone of voice and choosing the right typeface for the occasion. And had I have asked you which of these was the funniest, you would probably have voted C. Online surveys, I feel like I need one of those ah ah things. Um, online surveys say yes, C would have been rated as the most, um, the funniest laugh, but I didn't specify what kind of laugh. So this, if it's a comedic clown slapstick laugh, yes. But the beauty of typography, as we all know, is that it actually gives us the opportunity to play with a lot of nuances. 
So there are actually typefaces that would have been more satirical or more sarcastic and, um, and not always just the big belly laugh clown sounds. There is a really, really famous study that proves that if you tell somebody that a glass of wine they're drinking comes from a bottle that costs 90 pounds, they will enjoy it dramatically more than if they drink the same glass of wine and they're told that it costs a fiver. So if I read a study like this, I then sit there and go, could we do that typographically? And so I bring, this brings me on to my next game. Uh, so I've always wanted to do a Price is Right game, and so we're now going to do it. What I would like you to do is shout higher or lower, depending on whether you think that each label is more or less expensive. So do you think this is higher or lower? Oh, mostly higher, but there was one lower over there. <laughs> but higher one. <laughs> How about this one? I like the way you have to say it in a lower voice as well. <laughs> Excellent. How about this one? And by process of elimination. <laughs> so it's fairly, it's fairly instinctive. Would anybody disagree wildly with this, um, with this order? Um, it, I, it, it feels right. But, of course, as I said, I don't make assumptions. So I know this order because I've run some experiments. This is a big event that we did at the V&A where we turned it into a game, complete with a buzzer at the end. And this is an online survey. So I now have this fairly, um, this fairly good list of uh, order of typefaces. But, of course, as designers, we don't just do the obvious. What, what's great about having um, a benchmark is you can then take it and use the elements to do something else. So, if the expensive typeface is all about fine details, then could you apply fine details to the cheap one and make it expensive, and vice versa? So again, a designer, design typography, it's all about nuances and, and using and playing with, with what we have. Why do fonts matter? Because sometimes they also give you beer goggles. So this is why this is where you um, why you were asked to get some extra drinks. I like that you had to get lots of extra drinks. Um, this is not quite a drinking game, but if you've got anything left at the end, we'll bring we'll come back to it. What I would like you to do is drink, take a sip of your drink. I'm going to wait until everybody's picked them up. Take a sip of your drink. Have a look at the words on the screen while you're drinking it. Think about what it tastes like. How sweet is it? How bitter, how sour. If you're drinking beer, how fizzy is it? If you're drinking those um, sugar-free drinks, how sweet do they taste? I'm just going to wait until the last people have had a swig. So when you've had a swig and thought about that, I'm now going to ask you to do exactly the same thing while you look at this one. How sweet does it taste? If it's a fizzy drink, how fizzy is it? How bitter, how sour? Hands up how many of you noticed a difference? You're all a bit sort of shadowed, um, silhouetted. I can see quite a few hands. I would very much expect there to be a difference. So I've been doing work with the Crossmodal Research Lab at Oxford University, and one of the experiments that I've been running for a while now is the jelly bean experiment. And what we find is that if I give you two identical jelly beans, they can taste either sweeter or sourer, depending on what typefaces I'm showing you. And we're just in the process of publishing this as a proper, real study. I get my name as an author on a scientific paper. Um, and we've also run it at places like we did this mass experiment at the Science Museum, which was completely bonkers. So the great thing about me standing up here in front of all of you guys is I get to see your faces when I do things like this. a slightly slow burner, or when I do something like that. <laughs> I love it, graphic designers, it's like, oh, <laughs> don't want to laugh at it, but I've got to. <laughs> and so seeing everybody's faces, um, it, I find it really interesting. And what it has shown me is that we very definitely respond to typefaces emotionally. So what I would like you to do is focus your eyes on the, on the targets on the screen. So you all look pretty relaxed. That was Baskerville. That's clearly a fairly relaxing typeface to read. There's no, it's not particularly challenging. <laughs> that one, I 
there were frowns, there were laughs, a few people's body language actually changed a little bit. And this is something I find when I show big screens of typefaces like, of typefaces like Clute, that people do have a physical response to it. Now, of course, I'm not really measuring that. I, I wish I could. There, the technology is there to do it, and at some point we will start gathering all of this data and working it out. Um, and I'm going to end by talking about personalities, so typefaces. We all know that they have personalities. We all recognize the personalities in them. But what I also know is that you all know which typefaces you would date, ditch, or be just good friends with. And I'm going to demonstrate it. Hands up who would date one. And two. And three. Ooh, OK. So one and three were popular. Two actually got a few votes. <laughs> You're holding out there. Which one for? <laughs> Three, okay, and I'd like you you're keeping your hands up, so you're, you're claiming three. <laughs> um, so this particular one, again, we ran this at the VNA. It's also an online survey, and I do it in loads of workshops. But at the VNA, these were the results. So A was very, very definitely the most dateable, B was the most ditchable. But the thing I love most about all of these is actually the descriptions. So graphic design, design crowd, you all pick C. <laughs> So I know you're all reading B now, so I don't need to read it out. <laughs> so if ever you're in any doubt that people have a personal response to typefaces, <laughs> this is how I can prove it. And on the, that note, because I've gone way over my time, I apologise. Um, my book is like my little love letter to typography, gratuitous. That's where you find me. And thank you very much. And thank you very much for joining me.